came long before I was born. Look at the silos over there. When the Harkonnens abandoned that place, there had been literally no silo left for the Atreides. And it won't be a surprise if Baron Harkonnen ordered the removal of the silos from the very beginning. Because he had a very good notion that the Padisha Emperor will give him the permission to go for an ambush against the Atreides. So, he decided to remove all the expensive equipments from over there so that they could reduce the cost of the damage during the ambush at night. This thing is called a glow globe. These are levitating lights used for illumination purposes only. The grandfather of Paul Atreides died of an accident during the bullfight. I know that bullfight can be scary, but are we never gonna get to see a bullfight in chapter 3? How much will it cost them traveling all this way for this formality? Why do the eyes of Tufir Hawad have an extra layer of membrane? Well, he is not an average human being. These kinds of people have the ability to calculate and process information like a supercomputer. This guy is also a mentat, by the way. Who are these people? These are the representatives of the Spacing Guild Company. Now, if you don't have a good idea about the Dune universe, let me explain these people in the simplest language possible. Spacing Guild is a monopolistic space travel company that uses guild navigators to travel in space. Guild navigators are a different kind of mutated creature that consumes spice, like a food, to perform complex astronomical calculations to find out the fastest and safest paths for interstellar traveling. You cannot see the guild navigators in chapter 1 or 2 in the movie. And these people are actually the members of the Spacing Guild Mafia. If I zoom in the picture, you can notice that they also look like human beings. By the way, these weirdos are not a part of the Spacing Guild Mafia. They are the members of the Imperial Court. One kind of judge, you can say. You see that beetle over there? Inside the vision of Paul Atreides, you can see the same beetle crawling on the sand. And now Duncan is holding the same kind of beetle on the tip of his finger. This footage is an evidence that the visions of Paul Atreides can be very crystal sometimes. Ah, this slow blade penetrates the shield. If you are about to assault someone who has a shield, you have to move your weapon slow to penetrate the shield. Which means, if you wanna stab someone who has a shield, you have to move your weapon slow for more accuracy. Is it not weird? To be honest, I looked everywhere in the novel but I couldn't manage to find a logical and scientific explanation behind this. Very good. If you zoom in, you can find out that this guy was literally naked. Look at the big ass he has got. This is the perfect example of a big, fat, bumpy, hot, steamy, wet pussy. I wonder what the f*** he did, which caused him so much obesity. As much as I do know from the novel, this guy was turned into a humongous pig because the revered mother, Helen Mohayam, gave an incurable obesity disease to Baron Harkonnen for an act of disobedience. Also, I need to tell you another thing that this mother is a gay. That folded thing looking like a spaceship is actually a kind of shortcut to travel faster in the space. It's more like a wormhole but not a real wormhole. I wish I could explain the science behind it but your impatient ass will not enjoy hearing that thing. So drop it. I hold at your neck the gom java. That's in the box. Pain. Is there actually any kind of pain inside the box of that bitch? In reality, there is literally nothing inside the box to cause painful sensation. So, why did Paul begin to feel pain after putting his hand inside the box? The painful sensation was actually just a mind trick played by the Bene Gesserit. She was playing a mind game with Paul to make him feel like the box was extremely painful for some reason. And guess what? This simple phenomenon actually has a very deep and dark message inside. We humans also suffer more from our imagination than we do in reality. How many times did you feel anxiety in your life? I can pretty much claim with confidence that most of the times in your life when you felt anxiety, you didn't even engage yourself in any activity to solve the reason behind your anxiety. Anxiety only comes from inactivity and meaningless imagination. Because massive action is the biggest enemy to any kind of anxiety. The same thing also happened to Paul Atreides. His anxiety was giving him the pain, not the empty box of the Bene Gesserit. 
Why was Lady Jessica behaving that way when Paul was suffering inside the room during the test of his willpower? Well, Lady Jessica is also a Bene Gesserit herself, meaning she has an extended level of consciousness within herself. So, she actually has the ability to imagine herself in the exact situation of somebody else and presume the emotional shift that person is going through. Every time any positive character in the movie underwent any kind of failure or pain and then stood up again, almost a similar kind of background music used to play during that time. Let me show you three more examples from chapter 1. Paul Atreides had the visions of the ambush in Arrakis long before his moving over there. Look at the uniform. These are the people of the Baron military. Look at these people. These are the security guards of the House Atreides. And these people actually got decapitated by Glossu Raban in the movie. I just wonder whose hand was burning over there. Is there any way this was the hand of John Wick? I mean, I'm just saying. A mind powerful enough to bridge space and time. Is it really true that a Kwisatz Hadera has the ability to bend space and time? To be honest, this is not quite true. Paul has the ability to foresee his future because of his heightened level of consciousness which was the result of his psychological training by the Bene Gesserit herself and his mother. He cannot bend space and time like Doctor Strange or Loki. His exposure to a psychedelic called Spice and his intake of the poison of the sandworm unlocked more psychic ability within him. So, to put that into perspective, the quite Kwisatz Hadera is not actually a supernatural entity. He is just an extremely intelligent guy like the genetically modified Agent 47. You did this to me! You Bene Gesserit made me a freak! Is there any way this is the head of the bull which killed the grandfather of Paul Atreides? Before the meeting between Bene Gesserit and Paul Atreides, you can see the footage of a bull's head hanging on the wall. This was the first time when Paul Atreides had a vision of a massacre of his own people in Arrakis. And then, when the vision of Paul Atreides became true and his father died, you can see almost a similar kind of footage of the same bull's head. Was this footage intentional as a symbol of what was about to happen to the Atreides family? Or am I just overthinking? I guess the director himself doesn't know the answer. Sir. Look at the ornithopter. You can find eight wings over there. And guess what? There is another kind of ornithopter in this movie which had four wings only. And it makes sense because the topter with eight wings can sit more than eight people but the other topter with four wings cannot sit more than two people. This detail was amazing. If you zoom in, you can find out four people from the Fremen tribe standing over there looking at the ornithopter of Lisan Al Gaib. The director could have avoided putting some people over there but they decided to add some extra detail in the footage. This is amazing. If you zoom in, you can find 20 palm trees before the palace and guess what? This guy actually tells Paul Atreides that there had been 20 palm trees in the desert. 20 palm trees. 100 lives. Although these palm trees in the footage were just a CGI, it was still a good level of detailing in the movie. In length, to avoid making rhythmic noises which attract the sandworms, the Fremen... These are the carved picture of the sandworms. But what the hell are these? Are we never gonna get to see these creatures in Arrakis? They look like fish and I can pretty much guess that there has to be water beneath the sand in Arrakis. And maybe these creatures live in the water beneath the sand. The thing must leave. 
If you look at the back of this animal with an intrusive mind, you can get to see something else over there. You know what I'm talking about? You nasty people. Our pet doesn't understand your language. Get out! Did you also notice that their legs look like the hand of a human being with five fingers? Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. What is the reason behind the scar of Gurney Halleck? Now, it's a very long story that has been depicted in the novel, but I will give you a very short answer. Gurney Halleck in the past used to work in the industrial areas of Gady Prime under the supervision of Glossuraban. And one day, due to an act of disobedience and arrogance, Beast Raban struck on the face of Gurney Halleck with a very sharp metal. And guess what? In Chapter 2, Glossuraban actually died in the hand of Gurney Halleck.